How many, how many of you love the name of Jesus? How many of you are glad for the name of Jesus? I've got to tell you, this morning as we come around the Word of God, all I'm going to do is bring one message, one message only, one name, and one name only, and that is the name of Jesus. As we prepare our hearts for summit, and you know, we get to this weekend every year, and the truth is, we are launching now to go to the, the top of the summit. We're launching from way back here. There's a whole week ahead of us, and we're going to get ready. But I've got to tell you today, I am just thankful, thankful, thankful for the name of Jesus. A year ago, a year ago, you know the reality, I was not in church this Sunday, a week before summit a year ago. I think I was probably sitting on my couch right about now in tears, crying because I cried for 63 days in a row. But I'm thankful today that Jesus came and got me. He rescued me. He lifted me up. And I can tell you, He can do it for me. He can do it for you. What He's done for me, He will do for you. And so as I come into the house of God today, I just want to bring a name, one name, one name only. And that name is the name of that name is the name of, all right, now enjoy this. Just so we're clear today, I'm not going to be preaching by myself. I'm going to be leaning into you. And so if you want this service to finish before four o'clock, how many of you want to get on board right about now? We want to be out of here well and truly before four o'clock. Now, if you're new to Enjoy Church today, and I'm aware some of you are, if you're new to Enjoy, let me begin by saying, if I, if I start getting a little bit excited and a little bit too enthusiastic or a little bit too thankful or, or free with my praise and my gratitude for Jesus and all that He's done for me, I have to tell you, I am not the least bit sorry. I am not the least bit sorry. If I get too enthusiastic, if I get too thankful, if I get too joyful, I am not sorry. I'm not sorry for I was created to praise Him. Uh-uh, come on now. I was created to praise Him. I was saved to exalt Him. I was redeemed to glorify Him and sanctified to bless His holy name. Everyone say, bless His holy name. Psalm 34, reading from verse 1 says, <clears throat> excuse me, I will bless the Lord when, I will bless the Lord at all times, when, which, when? I will bless the Lord at all times, all times, all the time. I'm all the time going to bless His holy name. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. Let us exalt His name, church. Enjoy us everywhere. Let us lift up the name of the Lord and let us exalt His holy name. Is there anybody thankful in the house today, just out of curiosity? Is there anybody grateful? Is there anybody who wants to give God all the praise and all the glory today? I think one of the reasons that some are more grateful than others. And, and, and if, I, if I poke a little today, uh, once again, I'm not sorry, praise God. I've come to stir, I've come to provoke, I've come to remind us that we are born again, spirit-filled, Bible-believing, redeemed, saved believers that are on our way to heaven. And if we know it, we should be glad. We should be glad. But I think one of the reasons that some are more grateful than others and some are more thankful. Now, some of you might be thinking, don't you mean seem more grateful or seem more thankful? No, I don't mean that. I mean some are more grateful and some are more thankful. And sometimes I meet people and it's like, yeah, I'm saved. And it's like, you're not saved. You can't just be like, oh, I'm saved. No, 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 no. If you do not have a zing in you, if you do not have fire in you, if you do not have gratitude in you, if you don't have something on the inside that says, I'm thankful that I know the Lord Jesus Christ because I was lost and now I'm found. I was in the miry clay, but He leant down from heaven and He lifted me up and He put my feet on solid ground. He crowned me with love and compassion. Friends, there needs to be this sense of, I am thankful, I'm grateful. But the reason some are more thankful and more grateful is because some have a real understanding, a real revelation of all that Christ has done for them. All that Christ has done for them. I don't know about you, but there are a lot of people who think they're pretty good in their own right. It's like, I, 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 I don't do bad. I, I don't do bad. I like... I'm okay, I treat my, I love my neighbour, I do this, I do that. Friends, I don't care how good you are, you're not good enough. 
You're not good enough. You, you, your good works, they, they're not enough and neither are mine. In Luke chapter 7, verse 47 in the SBT, how many of you know what the SBT is? That would be the Shane Baxter translation. It's like, are you, are you messing with the Word of God? Heck yeah, I am. And I'm telling you, so you can go and you can work it out for yourself. It says here in my translation, those who believe they've been forgiven little, love only little, but those who know that they've been forgiven much, love much, love much. How many of you are grateful that you've been forgiven much? Forgiven much. We've been forgiven much, therefore what? We love much. If you're forgiven much, you love much. In, in Job, I was going to say job, praise God. Get a job, praise God. All right. How, how, many, how many of you cannot work out why it's spelt job but spe- uh, said Job? I, I got no idea either. Why isn't it robe? Why is there not an E on the end? I, I don't know these things. It's like, whatever. Anyway, so Job says, Job says, how many wrongs and sins have I committed? That's a great question. Show me my offense and my sin. I, I must admit, when I, when I, when I was preparing, and I, I, said, I see here, it says, show me my offense. Uh, if it was me, it should say offenses. Offenses, like when David went to court and there were offenses. How many of you know, we, 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 we don't just, it's not an offense, but it's offenses. Our sin is deep. Our offenses are many. That is the reality for all of us and for each of us. But how smart is Job? He wants to know how far he's fallen so that he can lean in and call upon the one and only who can save him. Friends, I want to encourage you today. There's only one who can save you. There is only one and his name is Jesus. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. And so Job has a revelation. He wants to know, I want an understanding, Lord, because I understand I am guilty of sin. We are all guilty of sin. None of us are exempt of this. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, there is salvation in no one else. No one else. Friends, I hate to be a party pooper, but there's not many roads leading to heaven. I know that's like, it's like, yeah, you go the Jesus route. We're going to go this route, this route, this route. There are not many roads leading into the presence of God. There is only one and his name is, he's the King of Kings and he's the Lord of Lords. There is salvation in no one else. There is no other name in all of heaven for people to call on to save them. But there is one name and his name is Jesus. And we can call upon his name to be saved. You can call upon his name. Now, you can tell I'm a little excited today. I'm a little bit happy. (laughs) i got a lot to be happy about because I found the name. I know the name. I know the person behind the name. He's the King of kings and He's the Lord of lords. He's the Prince of peace. He's Almighty God. And He's accessible to all of us, to all of you. Many of you know Him. Many of you carry Him. He's in your heart and you live with Him daily. Some of you may be in the room and you know of Him. Knowing of Him is not the same as knowing Him. You can know about Him, but friends, He wants to come and live within you. He's knocking on the door of your heart, even this day, to come and make His home within you. He wants to save you just like He saved me. (laughs) There is only one name under heaven by which man can be saved, and that is the name of Jesus. John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever... Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Now, all of that takes us to our key passage today. It's like, that's the entree. We're just warming up. Now we're about to jump into the key passage. Are you ready now? Are you ready to enjoy us? All right, let's go together. Psalm chapter 24, reading from verse 3. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? It's a great question. Mount Zion. House of God, presence of God. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? But he who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to an idol or swear by what is false, he will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, O God of Jacob, Selah. So, Which do you think comes first? I've asked this question many times recently. What comes first, the chicken or the egg? The chicken or the egg? Who here can claim to have clean hands? Who here can claim 
in your own strength, in your own right, to have a pure heart. Who here can claim to have never elevated something to that place where we idolise it? Or, or who here can claim to have never told a lie? The, the truth is, whether we like it or not, and uh, some of you may have come in thinking, well, that sounds like me. I'm about to pop your balloon today. Because there's not one in this room, none of us can claim to have this all down pat. The, uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 22 say, says here, all have sinned. That means you and me, it means all of us in this room today, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, I, I, I know we live in complicated times. We live in complicated days where the devil, who is a liar, by the way, he wants to complicate the simplicity of the gospel. We are living in really strange days. How many of you worked out the devil is a liar? The devil is a liar. He tells lies. He's a liar. He perpetuates lies. He's just, that's his deal. That's his mode of operandum. And so, but so he's all the time wanting to lie and cause deceit and trickery and mockery to the point where, where he will steal and rob and kill and destroy the good work and the good life that God is wanting to bring into your world, into your life. The, the enemy is a liar and, and he wants to complicate now the simplicity of the gospel. I love the gospel. It can be received by anyone and everyone. You don't need a doctorate. You don't need to be highly educated. You don't need to be undereducated. You don't need money. You don't need to be poor. You don't, as in, the gospel is free and accessible to all. And it is so simple in its reality. It almost seems too simple, which is why the devil would want to complicate it. And for, for the reality is for many, even within the church, the simplicity of the gospel has actually become a stumbling block. Can you believe that? It's like Jesus presents the gospel to us in its simplicity, but then the enemy wants to turn it the, uh, up, up, upside down and inside out and then becomes a stumbling block to those of us who actually believe it. But nevertheless, the simplicity of the gospel points to one name, just one name. Friends, can I encourage you today, if you, if you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, there is only one name you should believe in. That is the name of Jesus Christ. He is our Lord. He is our Saviour. That is it. The simplicity of the gospel points to one name, no other name, only the name of Jesus. Friends, there is no other name by which man can be saved other than the name of Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, it says, you seem to believe whatever anyone tells you. And how many of you know that is not an encouragement? That is a rebuke. That is a correction. Friends, I want to encourage you, don't be daft. You know what I mean by daft? Is in, there's a 1980s word straight out of 1980. There we are. Don't be daft. Don't be local. Don't be crazy. Don't be believing everything that comes along. So Paul's saying, you seem to believe whatever anyone tells you, you uh, even if they preach about a different Jesus than the one we preach or a different spirit than the one that you received or a different kind of gospel than the one you believed. Friends, can I encourage you today, don't be daft. Don't go be, be believing now everything that the devil wants to pile on to overcomplicate the simplicity and the truth of the gospel that you have received. And so if the devil can't stop you from receiving Jesus, the spirit of truth and the gospel of good news that will lead you into all the fullness of life, you know what he's going to add to it? He's going to try and start adding to, adding to what you already believe. All right, you received salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. And it's like the enemy hates that. He hates you and he hates that. So now he's going to try and lumber on and lumber on. It's going to put on you, put on you, add on you, add on you, so that in the end you become so weighed down with all these other realities, you lose your first love, you lose your joy, and along the way you're going to lose your faith in Jesus Christ. Now, this is not new. This is not new. What's happening is not new. It, it was like it in the, in the book of Acts and in the New Testament there. Jesus knew it was coming, which is why he said in John 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through good works. <laughs> except through obedience to the law. Oh, oh, oh. 
Uh, no one comes to the Father except through, you can, yeah, except Jesus says, except through me. So how do we get to the Father? Through Jesus. And Jesus made it so clear, just come through me. He makes it so clear. How clear does he have to say it? There is only one way to the Father. Now, I don't know about you, I, I, I love this. There, there's not many ways to the Father. Jesus makes it so clear. There's only one way, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's why Paul said, I only have one message. I'm only here to preach one message. Jesus Christ, Him crucified. Jesus Christ, Him crucified. It's all in the name of Jesus. But, there, but the enemy wants to load you up. The enemy wants to add to it. The enemy wants to weigh you down. So like I say, your joy is stolen, your peace is stolen. So you get bombarded with all this stuff. But Jesus makes it plain and clear so that whenever anyone adds to faith in Him, it might be reje rejected and recognized as false teaching and a thieving spirit. That's what it is. Now, the reason I'm here to bring this message today is because you need to know who you are and you need to know who He is. If you don't know who you are and who he is, how many of you know the enemy is going to rob, kill, and destroy? I don't want the enemy to rob, kill, and destroy you. I want you to know the truth because the truth shall set you free. And then it will keep you free if you know it. The good shepherd, who is Jesus, goes through the gate, who is also Jesus. All right, it's getting weird in here. All right, so is the good shepherd Jesus or is the gate Jesus? How many of you know all things were created by him? All things were created for Him and all things are held together by Him. All right, so Jesus is the Good Shepherd and Jesus is the gate. Jesus comes and goes. And how many of you know, His sheep hear His voice. He, he, they hear His voice. They're not going to follow any other voice. How many of you know there's someone else who wants to get into the sheep pen though? He's a thief. He comes over the wall. But we're not going to listen to His voice. We're going to keep listening to the voice of Jesus that we might stay close to Him, that we might follow Him. So friends, can I encourage you today, when the thief climbs over and introduces a different spirit, a different gospel, a, 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 a different Jesus, how many of you know it's right about then that we need to start singing, hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. No. Come on, you got to, come on. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more. You guys, come on. You got something. It's Sunday, for goodness sake. Praise God. You're all sung out singing all the Jesus songs. You can't remember. Hit the road, Jack. Praise God. What do you got to sing? You got to sing? No, you missed it. All right. Too late. Too late. Bad luck. All right. That's all right. You might get another opportunity. We'll see. Romans chapter 10, reading from verse 6 says here, but the righteousness... Actually, I know it's the worship team if they can come. The righteousness that is by faith says. How you, your righteousness. I, I spoke about this a few weeks ago. Righteousness, when you want, if you want to know about the righteousness of God, just think about what is right in the eyes of God. How many of you want to be right in the eyes of God? That's righteousness. All right. So the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down. So sometimes we think God is so far away. How are we ever going to be saved? How are we going to be healed? How are we going to step into what God's... We need to go to heaven or, or we need to get up into the presence of God and bring God down and we've got to try and get this worked out. Or, or who will say, who will descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead? It's like, it's like sometimes, sometimes it seems like God can be a long way off. So God's in heaven, Jesus is in heaven, so I've got to get up there and bring him down to what's happening in my world if he's going to help me. Or I've got to go down to where he's dead and bring him up to where I'm at. But how many of you know Jesus is always way closer than that? You don't need to go up there and you don't need to go down there. He, he's right here with you today. He's right here with us today. But what does it say? This is what the Scripture says. The Word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the Word of faith we are proclaiming. All right, so we need to remember the apostles. This is the early church. The word of faith that we are proclaiming. Friends, I want to encourage you. I, you know what I love? It's all about Jesus. It's all in the name of Jesus. You did not do anything to be saved to begin with. Why do you think you need to do something to stay, stay saved now in the context of, it's like, 
It's like, well, why do we put so much on people? You've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Friends, you know what? This is what I love about Jesus. I, I don't do for Jesus to get saved. I do for Jesus because I love Him and He saved me. He first loved me and now I want to give my life to Him every day. Friends, I want to encourage you. Jesus has done it all. It all. You know, I stood there with these guys and girls last Saturday night. I'm thinking, thank you for the grace of God. I'm not, I was no different to those cats, kids. Back in the 80s, we were all cats. I was no different to any of them. And I am no different, but for the grace of God. A free gift came my way, the free gift of salvation. I just reached out and grabbed it. It was offered to me and it's offered to you. But you've got to receive it. The Word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the Word of faith we are proclaiming. And we're still proclaiming that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. You will be saved. If you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. If, you, if you'll confess with your mouth, I, I, I like this. And it's, not about, it's not about us having to do, 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 do. Jesus has done it all. We just need to receive it by faith. Receive it by faith. For, if, for in your heart, sorry, sorry, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the Scripture says, anyone who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. Anyone who trusts in Him. <laughs> but the thief climbs over the wall to add to that. Because like, and I know that, you know, there is an intellectual spirit on planet Earth that says, this is too simple. It's got to be harder. It's like, do you really believe that God has done it all and you just need to receive it? Well, frankly, honey, yes, I do. I do. I, I'm a believer of the Bible. I don't want to depart from the Bible. I'm never going to depart from the Bible. But the thief climbs over the wall to add to that which God has given to us. He's given us Jesus. He's given us the Spirit. He's given us the Gospel. And, but the enemy wants to add to it that he might rob, kill and destroy all that God is wanting to do in us. So the enemy comes along and he says, yes, it's good that you received Jesus. Good for you. But what about good works? You need to work your way to heaven. Friends, you can't work your way to heaven. Good works, should we do good works? Absolutely. Why? Because He is good and we're made in His likeness. He came, He did good, we will do good. But my salvation is not based on good works. My salvation is based, in, uh, based on my faith in Jesus Christ. My faith in Jesus Christ. He has done it all. He's done it all. I, 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 so I'm all for good works, but that's not going to save you. They couldn't, didn't save me and it won't save you. It's never saved anybody. But by our faith, there's no doubt about it. We, people will see our good works because of our faith. Yes, it's good that you receive the Spirit, but you need to observe the law to be saved. It's very popular out there at the moment. But friends, I want to encourage you. If, if it was that simple, why did Jesus come? No one can observe the law. Huh. It's a burden that the old... Uh, the Old Testament priests would put on the people. But how many of you know they couldn't even observe the law themselves? No one, you're not going to get saved by observing the law. I would say take the whole counsel of God, Old Testament and New Testament, take the truth, take the life, live in the Word of God, be obedient to it. But let's not be thinking that we're going to observe the law and be saved through that. Only by the name of Jesus, only through the name of Jesus can we be saved. It's that simple. Jesus, 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 Jesus. All the law is fulfilled in the name of Jesus. So we receive Christ. Yes, it's all good that you've received the gospel of good news. But we have truth. Uh, we've been hearing this one recently. We've been hearing truth that most of the church doesn't know about. How many of you know that's baloney? We'll call it baloney. I love the fact that God is not willing that any would perish. So He reveals truth to all of us, that you might know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You know what the Bible says? Is that Galatians where it says, even if we or an angel stand before you and preach a gospel different to this, 
You know what it says? What does it say? They're going to be thrown into hell. They're going to be lost forever. They're going to be condemned. Same, 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 same. Different translations. They're going to be condemned. You know what it says straight after that? So the Scripture says, even if we, being the preachers, or an angel stand before you and preach a different gospel, they're going to be condemned. Out of, you know what it says immediately after? This is what it says. Even if an angel, or even if we are an angel, stand before you and preach a different gospel, it's like, are you saying it says it twice? It says it twice. Let's not be preaching a different gospel. Let's not be embracing a different spirit. Let's not be laying hold of a different Jesus. Because the Jesus, the Spirit, and the gospel that we received at salvation is the same Jesus, Spirit, and gospel that's going to see us all the way into heaven. We just need to keep lifting up and exalting the name of Jesus. Everyone say Jesus. You guys are quiet this morning. Quiet, quiet, quiet. I'm taking it as a sign because you're so enthralled by the revelation that's coming from the platform. We'll just go with that. I, I, I love the name of Jesus. I was, in, I was in the shower this morning. Everyone have a shower this morning? It, okay, so I'm a little bit older than some of you. Not as old as some. A little older than some. And every now and again, songs come back like from 100 years ago. Like even before I was saved in reality. Anyone know that song, I just keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. I just keep falling in love with him. And I'm, I'm in the shower. La, 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 la. It's like, praise God. I just keep falling in love with him over and over and over and over again. It gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, what a love between my Lord and I. I just keep falling in love with him over and over, over and over. And I was like, I'm just in the shadow. I was like, where did this song come from? Oh, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for the name of Jesus. Let's all breathe for a minute. You can be my podium. Thank you. Oh, Lord, so thankful. A year ago, sitting on the couch every day, crying. And I wondered if I was ever going to come back. I wondered if I was ever going to find myself again. These tears today, they're not tears like they were a year ago. They're different tears. They're tears of gratitude, thankfulness. I stood with my friends from a long time ago, a week ago. And I was like, Lord, I'm so thankful. Thankful for my wife, thankful for my children, for my grandbabies, so that little Japanese kid is going to steal and take to Japan. I love him, but he's a mongrel. Oh, I love him, and I love them, and I love you. I love to watch you guys grow up. I love what you've grown and you've grown up before my eyes. You know, you guys, as I said, I was watching you up on the platform. It's so sweet. I don't know how long you've been in our world, but it feels like forever. It's a great thing about being able to send our natural children away. We've got other children that we love, we're endeared to, and we've got brothers and sisters. And it's like, I'm so blessed, blessed. I'm not blessed because I'm good. I'm blessed because He is good. I could never have done this. If you knew the high school that I went to, (laughs) but He first loved me. 
which gave me the opportunity to love him and meet Davy Crockett. I hate this. It's like looking through the fog. In Romans, because we go back to the question then, who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. But none of us in this room can actually claim to have clean hands and a pure heart. We've read all the Scriptures. In fact, this is what it says here in Romans 3.23. For all have sinned, all fall short of God's glorious standard. That's all of us. Yet now God in His glorious kindness declares us not guilty. Aren't we glad about that? Not guilty. Say, yes, I'm guilty. But God says, not anymore, Shaney boy. Not anymore. He declares us not guilty because He's a kind, kind, kind Father. He has done this through Christ Jesus, who has freed us by taking away our sins. For God sent Jesus to take the punishment for our sins and to satisfy God's anger against us. We are made right with God. You are made right with God. I am made right with God. When we believe that Jesus shed His blood, sacrificing His life for us, God was being entirely fair and just when He did not punish those who sinned in former times. And He is entirely fair and just in this present time when He declares sinners to be right in His sight because they believe in Jesus. Because they believe. What about the good works? Because they believe in Jesus. What about the law? Because they believe in Jesus. So once again, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? All who believe in their hearts and confess with their mouths that Jesus Christ is Lord. Psalm chapter 24, main passage, reading from verse 5. He will receive blessing. Who will? He will, she will, they will. They will, who believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. He will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God his Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek Him, who seek your face, O God of Judah, Selah. Is there anyone thankful today?